So data for better motion control. Data is not a new technology. So if your car was manufactured before flash memory became uh, reliable, uh, it is more, uh, very likely that when you change the battery of your car, you're going to lose the uh, volatile data stored in the uh, engine control unit. And uh, when, you, uh, when you run your car again, you will feel weird uh, because uh, your, your engine loses uh, combustion compensation and it would perform poorly until new data has been collected. So actually, data compensation, data-driven compensation has been used in cars for over 20 years. So what, what can be done for robots? It turns out that motion control systems of robots are pretty good data generators. They, they, produce, they produce new data every millisecond. And those data, over time, that's a huge amount of data which can be obtained and used for, to improve the performance of robots. Uh, uh, specifically uh, in uh, sensing compensation, control compensation, simulation, and optimization. So uh, data can help with sensing. Delay and low sampling rate in sensors are often the bottleneck of real-time motion control. This is especially true for uh, remotely controlled or vision-guided robots. At some point, we realized that a vision-guided robot is pretty much alike of, uh, to a, a radio-guided uh, airplane. Uh, as a matter of fact, it turns out that uh, as early as in the 1970s, engineers at NASA, they began to use data to compensate the delay in radar signals. So inspired by their uh, idea, we have developed a series of uh, data-driven compensation methods, data learning methods, to recover feedback information from delay and slow sampling. You might find it surprising to, to see the name of the Apnoff in the machine learning site hub, but it actually turns out to be the most, the most elegant solution that uh, we have ever formulated. Uh, using data-driven compensation, sensing error can be reduced uh, significantly over a large, uh, over a wide range of frequency, uh, both to recover the original signal and to estimate its derivatives. Data can also help compensating control signals. These are two one-inch diameter holes cut by an industrial robot with ultra-high speed. You might wonder what's the big deal with that slight imperfection. Well, the situation, the, the deal is, for the, in, the, in the production line, the robot on the left, can, yeah, the robot on the left can only be used to put iPhones into boxes, whereas the robot on the, on the right can, can be used to actually produce, product, uh, make iPhones. So to achieve, the, to achieve that ultimate precision, uh, we, we have developed a, a data-driven non-parametric learning methods for both torque control and the motion planning. Note that using a non -parametric, by using non-parametric learning, analytical model is no longer necessary. It's, only, it's, it's just a numerical data. And to put the robot at the tip-top perform performance, data has to be collected, scored, partitioned, and learned constantly. It's just like an acrobat that needs practice every day. Recently, we started research on data-driven simulation, which requires no analytical model but uses only numerical data. So we, soon we, we learned that there is a huge mathematical difference between data-driven simulation and data-driven control. So unlike control, simulation, in simulation, learning has to be done in frequency domain instead of uh, regular domain or time domain. Uh, using proper data and proper data management, high-fidelity, high high-speed data-driven simulators can be built. High-fidelity, high-speed high means you can abuse it. Uh, Multi-objective, high-dimensional optimization can be done as simple as exploring the parameter space with millions of simulated tests. And getting an optima is as simple as moving sample, sample filters up and down. Thank you. Questions?